Ireland's burn I dug. Thy cheeks been getting redder. Grim Scatterhouse to cheddar. There's still more cider in the jug. Drink up the cider. Drink up the cider. For tonight we'll marry me. This famous old Bristol pub is uh, called the Lamplighters. Been here for a long, long time. You normally find me at the other end of the River Avon, at the beginning, the source up near Tetbury, but today I'm at Avon Mouth. And uh, on the opposite side of the river here is Pill, which was a famous old port in its day the last port on the River Avon before it goes out to sea. So today I'm going to have a ride on my bicycle around Bristol, taking a few photos. And uh, I've picked a controversial time to come here because there was a big riot here yesterday about a, over a government bill that's going through Parliament and uh, I'm hoping that won't have interfere with my plans. The River Avon flows into the Severn estuary and you may or may not know that the River Severn has a very very high tidal range as indeed does this part of the River Avon. If you look over there you can see the uh, harbour wall and the boats floating in the water which would normally be much much higher if the tide was in. Seeing how far out that tide is, um, the, where this person's walking across the tide actually comes right up to there. It's um, 40 foot plus tide. Well you might say to me why Bristol? Well Bristol is a very famous old seaport on the west side of uh, England and it was uh, a very important port back uh, in the old trading days with the New World. Um, lots of trading in uh, sugar, tobacco and of course uh, it has a history of being in the slavery business which is one of Bristol's um, controversial historical points, um, um, protests and uh, various things to try and rename various buildings and tear down statues and effectively trying to get rid of the, the history which um, personally uh, I see nothing wrong with remembering the history and remembering what uh, various individuals did in the past which is not something we would ever think of doing today but uh, anyway I have a lot of people that they all want to visit Bath but they don't know anything about Bristol and um, very often when, when I bring people here in the end they they actually prefer Bristol to Bath and find it a very very interesting city so I'm just going to go around and take a bit of video a few photos a little bit of commentary uh, just to uh, explain um, about the history and about the the current Bristol as well as the historic Bristol. I shall be riding around on my electric bike which I have in the back of my van. There's my van over there and uh, I shall park my van up on the Clifton Downs and get the bike out the back and uh, start pedalling off. So here we are up on the Clifton Downs, starting the trip down through Bristol. Hopefully it will be an interesting ride. This is the view of the suspension bridge from the uh, Clifton Downs, looking up the River Avon. Uh, we will see the suspension bridge from the other side. Uh, a bit later on. This is now what is known in Bristol as Black Boy Hill. Sounds a little bit like it might be 
related to race and slavery perhaps but uh, that isn't thought to be the case um, the road runs into white ladies road which again is a has a dubious name you may say but the white ladies are thought to refer either to the white flowers that were in the fields here or to the uh, the nuns that were wearing white habits the buildings here on the left actually is BBC Bristol um, which is where all the wonderful BBC Nature film coverage comes from. This area of Bristol is called Clifton. This is the uh, original part of Bristol University and uh, what we're looking at here is the Wills Memorial Tower. Now the Wills family were um, farming tobacco in the New World and they were major tobacco manufacturers in this country up until probably uh, the mid-1970s and uh, the family actually paid for this tower to go in and also uh, um, they, they actually funded the university or a lot of it anyway so good and bad no doubt people were exploited during the course of their business but um, people also benefited from that this is the Cabot Tower and is, was built uh, in memory to, of John Cabot, the first person to discover mainland America from Bristol in 1497. Columbus discovered the, the islands in 1492, uh, but it wasn't until 1497 that John Cabot set out in his little boat, the Matthew. It was built in Bristol and discovered Newfoundland. This is Park Street. Looking up Park Street, you can see the Wills Memorial Tower up there. Now another thing that Bristol is known for is Banksy, the graffiti artist. This is one of his more notorious uh, works that unfortunately has been messed up as you can see. But you can see the uh, general story of what this is all about. Shame that's happened to it. I've got a print of it hanging in my downstairs loo. As you can see, this pub is called The Hatchet, established around 1500, one of Bristol's oldest and in its time notorious of pubs. Would have been a, a port side pub in its day, but the shipping has all moved from here now. This is the Bristol Hippodrome, one of the oldest theatres in Bristol. 
now closed of course for the time being I seem to remember the present Mrs Little and I went and saw the Four Seasons there Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons back in the 1970s doesn't matter where you look in Bristol there is history everywhere this used to be an old fish and chip shop this is Christmas Steps which has been hidden away behind a modern building perhaps will be opened up again one day but this goes from Lewins Mead up to uh, up towards Clifton just coming into part of Bristol where there's a lot of graffiti art and also sadly graffiti which has been defaced such as that picture right ahead of us of supposedly of Jesus breakdancing which has been covered in blue paint a shame This is one of the more famous Banksy's and uh, depicts a time when Bristol was a uh, in conflict with the police which indeed they were last night so uh, it's a bit ironic really but we had the Bristol riots back in the late 1970s and I take it that that is what that's all about it took place in, the, in this area of Bristol St Paul's well actually this is Stokes Croft but the two areas run into each each other I remember when I first worked in Bristol the area across the river here was actually a brewery Courage Brewery and you could smell it every morning when they did the brewing um, I also remember a few years back now I had a German guy I was taking down to the airport here and he said I do not like this city the uh, architecture is very boring unimaginative so I took him down a street called Open Old Market and I said this was the center of Bristol an absolutely beautiful street before you guys came and bombed the crap out of the place now Bristol was very badly bombed in the war and uh, where I am now is St Peter's Church a ruined church after the bombing in World War II and it's been left as, as is as a memorial to how Bristol was back in the old days Right ahead of us is Bristol Bridge Just standing on Bristol Bridge and uh, taking a shot of the the only church clock in England as far as I know that has a second hand the clock is not showing the right time at the moment they blame everything on Covid so no doubt that's what it's all about but you can see through the trees that it has got a, a second hand at the bottom this building right in front of me here is uh, where I used to work back in the 1970s. We're now driving up into Corn Street. Top of Corn Street is the Corn Exchange. 
which is where people used to come and sell, buy and sell corn. But it has a couple of very interesting features, which I will show you in a minute. So first of all, these are called the nails. And uh, it's where people would come and uh, put the, cook their corn on top of these things and uh, the buyer would inspect the quality of the corn and then they would pay the cash uh, we have an expression over here in the UK cash on the nail and that is where this expression came from if you want to be paid in cash oh, what a racket if you want to be paid in cash you say pay me cash on the nails So this is St. Nicholas Market and I imagine everything is closed up at the moment but we shall see oh. No, it looks like it's part of it's open, I'll walk over there in a minute This is the covered market which does look as if it's closed. Just along here is the, the Rummer pub, which I remember going in many years ago, back in the early 1970s. Used to go downstairs to the cellar bar. I remember going down there, but I don't remember coming back up. Thank goodness this pub is still called The Crown, although it looks like it's up for sale. Again, when I worked up here, I used to come here and have lunch, liquid lunch in those days, wasn't it? Do you remember those days? This clock on the Corn Exchange is showing Bristol time. Back in the old days, the local time in different places was set by the time the sun was at its highest point above that location at noon. Bristol is nearly three degrees behind Greenwich, so Bristol time was 13 minutes behind London. It was not until the railways came in that it became necessary to standardise the time, so this clock shows both Bristol time in black and Greenwich mean time in red. This is Welsh back so called because the trows or the ships bringing goods from South Wales would uh, moor up here and unload their cargo. You can see uh, St. Peter's Church in, in the distance behind Bristol Bridge. Very, very old part of Bristol here. This area has all been screened off to uh, keep people apart from each other but this is a very famous pub the old duke jazz trad jazz every night here great atmosphere all amateur brilliant place to come and spend an evening right opposite the old duke is the landogger trow again named after a uh, welsh ship and this is the place where it is reputed that uh, Robert, Robert Louis Stevenson wrote the book Treasure Island. Now this is one of the oldest streets in Bristol and uh, it's thought that this would have been the, 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 the inspiration for Treasure Island and uh, for Blind Pew and the Admiral Benbow and and when these guys were pressed into the Navy. I'm going to try and show you a couple of the pubs. This is the Bristol Old Vic, one of the oldest theatres in the country. Obviously nothing is happening here at all at the moment, sadly. Hopefully they will get back to business again in the summer. Two or three pubs here. The Beer Emporium is a new name. 
the naval volunteer is where I spent where my misspent youth was uh, abused and then just past there you have the King William it is said that the naval volunteer was the inspiration that uh, Stevenson had for the Admiral Benbow makes sense this is Queen Square in Bristol back in uh, 1831 uh, there was a big riot here a bit like last night really this time people were rioting against the second reform bill and uh, much of the city centre was burnt and a lot of the houses here were destroyed and had to be rebuilt it's a lovely square This is St. Mary Redcliffe Church, which was described by Henry VIII in the 1400s when he came here as the fairest church in all the land. Beautiful church. I'm not supposed to be cycling along here. but I am. We're now on the floating harbour built by Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Because of the enormous tides on the River Avon, um, it, the boat building business was just impractical because uh, half the time the, the boats were sitting on mud. So what Brunel did is he dammed the river at the end of this uh, harbour here and used prisoners of war from the 1812 war to dig out the, the new cut which diverted the River Avon around this area which I'll show you in a minute some people say it wasn't prisoners of war that did it but I think that sounds like a nice story the ship in front of us is the Matthew which is the replica of the little ship that went across the Atlantic and discovered Newfoundland with John Cabot. If you look at the size of it, it's just amazingly small. It was The replica was rebuilt in Bristol back in uh, 1992 and uh, sailed across to Halifax, Nova Scotia. I knew some people who went over there to see it over there. And apparently it was a pretty vile crossing. That is the extent of the Matthew that you can see there. I don't think I'd have fancied going across the North Atlantic in that. Either in 1492 or in 1992 indeed. So this area of the dockside uh, has now turned into a leisure area. And I can remember when they were planning this and I thought, yeah, it'll never happen, but it has. And my goodness, look how socially distanced everybody is, I don't think. Sitting here having their lunches, which is about what I'm about to do. This is an old steam crane, over a hundred years old, and still working. You can come down here at weekends and uh, see the steam working here at normal times. And also there's a steam train that goes up and down here. This was a bomb site um, back after the war. 
see in the distance those uh, coloured houses. We will go up there in a bit. I thought there may be a lot of people out exercising and now exercising and relaxing, sitting on a bench with each other, which we're now allowed to do. I didn't think that there would be this many people. This is Brunel's ship, the SS Great Britain. Can't get any closer to it because I've got a gate here. Um, but I'll show you uh, another picture of it later. Um, this was the, the world's first iron steamship and it was towed back from uh, South America as a hulk and rebuilt here. It appears to be floating but it's actually not floating. I love these houses. We'll be up there later looking back down. What a nice place to have a spot of lunch. I can remember coming down to this uh, harbour side many years ago, back in the late 70s, where well, they used to do powerboat racing here, like Formula One powerboat racing. Extremely dangerous. After a few years, they had to stop it because there was accidents of boats hitting the the, the stone walls. The pigeons have come to see what's left. Not much. It's a lovely facility here for people. The, the big brick built building ahead of us is a bonded warehouse. They were built in the early 1900s, three or four of them I think. They are short of redundant at the moment, but um, I think they're finding things to do with them. On the left, coming up here, is the Cottage Inn. Closed, of course, although well, apparently allowed to open on the 21st of April. The Underfall Boatyard is another of Brunel's achievements here in Bristol. And right in the middle of the shot there, you'll see a blue boat. And that was on a steam-powered hoist. And they actually only got rid of the steam power um, back well, maybe now 10 or 15 years ago but the underfall yard still builds um, wooden boats and there is actually a blacksmith here as well in the background here you'll see the suspension bridge way in the distance again Brunel's suspension bridge So yes, this is the underfall boatyard, but unfortunately it is closed. This is the other end of the underfall boatyard, but it is all blocked off, unfortunately. This is the, another old pub, the Nova Scotia. Pubs around Bristol have got these um, New World names. Another one we passed just now is called the uh, Louisiana. All been here a very long time. Past the bonded warehouse. All right, so 
we've just come under the Plimsoll Bridge. So this is the Plimsoll Swing Bridge, named after Plimsoll, who came up with the idea of the Plimsoll line that goes around a ship. Just so happens that one of my ancestors would marry to the guy. Those of you in the United States that are only familiar with a tidal range of a foot or so, maybe there on the uh, coast of New Jersey. Just take a look at this. The water comes up to within about three feet of the top of this wall. What we have here are the lock gates for the floating harbour that will let the uh, shipping in and out. And again in the distance there you see the, the Plimsoll Bridge I'm actually three of the bonded warehouses. And there in the distance is the suspension bridge. Hope to be up there in a bit. Right now the tide is half in and half out. If it was out it would be even more of a muddy mess. Sorry about the traffic noise here. Isambard Kingdom Brunel, who uh, designed this bridge, uh, the first suspension bridge, uh, unfortunately he, he passed away before it was finished. But uh, it's certainly an amazing bridge and is carrying traffic today. Finished in 1850, I think, or thereabouts. Brunel built bridges, ships as we've seen, railway lines, tunnels as you can see one over there. Um, incredible guy and uh, rightly deserves the adulation as uh, Britain's most incredible engineer. Another swing bridge up ahead. This is now Hot Wells Road. Feel myself coming up this hill because it's as steep as any you're likely to find, but the old e-bike seems to cope with it very well. I don't know if you can get the angle of this. It is steep. First gear now, sport mode, but I'm still coming up. Wouldn't fancy my going up those steps every day. Probably give me the world of good. Bit of a parking issue here. I would imagine there were a few wing mirrors lost in this road. I remember being up here on the first day that the temperature in the UK actually reached 100 degrees. I was here watching the uh, balloon fiesta. It was absolutely killingly hot. If you see this pub here, the lion, this is where I sought refuge in beer. That was in 2003. Oh, I've got to show you this. This is a favourite little thing that I show people. This is the, what they do for flower pots here. Is that neat? Or is that neat? 
the moss growing out of them. Gorgeous. Great idea. So what I was going to say was, the houses on the right are worth a lot more money than the houses on the left. And in a minute you will see why. If you live on the right hand side, you pay a huge premium compared with if you live on the left. I will show you in a minute. So these are the houses that were on the right hand side that have a premium. Guess why? This is their view. Stunning view of Bristol. And here we have a great view of the SS Great Britain that appears to be floating but it's actually in about two inches of water so as the hull doesn't uh, get damaged but it looks like it's floating we came all the way up there along there and if you look into the distance uh, you will see St Mary Redcliffe Church the fairest church in all the land. Amazing view this. I never get tired of it. Back in 2003 when I was here in that heat, I was stood here talking to a guy who knew everything about Bristol. At that time, I had no idea what my business was going to be. Because I didn't start doing this till about 2006 and could I find that guy no way I really could have done with him he was a fascinating chap yeah, that's where I was sitting over there having my lunch here we have a dry dock right ahead the yellow but you know how do you fancy this for a deck? We've got some more over there, look. Stunning. These houses here, I would say, are worth even more. Um, not because they look better, because they're much more modern. But look, they have parking. And the others don't. So, I wouldn't even like to say what... Uh, these places would go for. Just coming into Clifton Village. And then into York Crescent. This is a gorgeous crescent of houses. That to my mind equals the Royal Crescent in Bath. They're now um, split up into apartments underneath where you had stables. There's now a downstairs garden apartment or whatever you want to call it. But I love these places. It would just be unfortunate to live here and end up living 
downstairs where you had absolutely no view. This is the view. Wonderful. Up to Dundry Hill in the background. We used to live over the top, the other side of that hill, a place called Bishop Sutton. Hmm. Looks like I'm going to have to go all the way back. This is how they look from the road below. Bridge again here. And when I bring people up here, they can often see the similarity between the buildings here and in places like New Orleans or Charleston. And there is no, that is no coincidence because there was an awful lot of trade between Bristol and those places. Of course, in the old days, each one of these would have been a single house. But not anymore. On the other side of the road, they all have a front garden. And they have a key to that garden. So although it looks like they have no yard they do how nice is that So this is Clifton Village. Lots of little independent stores, restaurants, bistros. coffee shops so Bristol is a city of contrasts cultural artistic wealthy nautical And it has its poor areas as well. My ancestor, Samuel Plimsoll, 
lived in one of these houses here on the right. With the balconies that you can see here. Right opposite the suspension bridge. Nice place to be. I'm going to go across there, I hope. Here's the bridge. People relaxing. Yeah, so I'm afraid this is one of those places. So about half an hour ago, I was just down there, this side of uh, those jetties, looking up. What amazes me is how this bridge can take today's traffic even though it's uh, 150 years old hundred and seventy years old even good view of the bonded warehouses and the Plimsoll Bridge. They call that area the Cumberland Basin. There is a toll for coming over here, but not for bikes. The houses ahead of us go to show that uh, Bristol was a very wealthy place, is a very wealthy place. Home of uh, Concord, home of Rolls-Royce aero engines. It's a lovely town. So here we are back on Clifton Downs or up on the downs as they say in Bristol what it leaves me to do is load this in the back of the van and it's time to go home finally I couldn't come to Bristol without coming to Temple Meads railway station also built by the same guy, Isambard Kingdom Brunel. This uh, canopy here on the left is original, 150 or more years old. The clock tower was added later in the 1870s and looks more like a cathedral than a railway station. Extraordinary just how few people there are here. Masses of taxis but no people. Let's hope things change in the near future. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.